Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Angel here at the First in Texas San Antonio event. I'm here with Team 5572, the Rosbots, showcasing their robot here. They have an excellent coral and algae scoring mechanisms, as well as an excellent climber and some automations. So let's get right into this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. So we're going to start off with Diego, who's going to talk to us a little bit about the climber and feeder on this bot. Diego? So our climber is located at the back of our robot. Um, the reason we chose this position is because the center of gravity for the robot is located in the middle. And if we pivot the climber, when, when the cage is attached, the cage, the chain will land perfectly in the middle of our center of gravity and allowing us to be stable when we climb. Um, the climber uses these teeth that, that hook onto the cage. So when the cage gets locked, gets pushed into here, it gets locked in and it can't be released on both sides. And then once the cage is locked in, it pivots back and the cage is, the robot is off the ground. So incorporated into our climber design, we have our feeder station, our feeder station, which you drop coral in and it goes into our, straight into our outtake station. And yeah. So looking at you performing here at San Antonio, we see that you, the coral, as your human player is feeding the coral, it's going right there and aligning perfectly. What did you do design-wise, or did you give your human player some practice time in order to perfect that? Um, so we did both of those um, steps. So before, we used to only be able to score coral through drawing it horizontally over here, but we added um, this space over here to be able to score coral from this side so that it's easier to easier to see the the out the april tags with our cameras which are in the front to make it our automation a lot faster and the reason it's in the back is so that it can be a pass through and get straight into the um the outtake and it's just a lot of space so that the human player can efficiently put the coral into the box well, talking about game pieces, uh, we need to score those game pieces. So let's pass it on over to Sebastian, who's going to talk about uh, our the algae scoring mechanism and the coral scoring mechanism. Yeah, so uh, for that coral outtake mechanism, we just have a gearbox attached. We have a gearbox attached with the motor, Neo 550 with the conversion kit. So we could attach those uh, max planetary gearboxes, uh, which just has a four inch diameter um, compliant wheel which when the coral comes through it feeds it all the way through here up until it reaches these uh, beam brakes where it just stops so that whenever we get near the reef we're just ready to score um, our drivers are able to know when our coral is ready to score once these beam break the beam breaks and these lights turn a different color uh, and for our algae mechanism we have this drop down mechanism, which starts in the stowed position like this at the beginning of the match. And as soon as the match starts, we have a little jitter so that uh, it can drop down. And then we have this little hook so that when our elevator is coming, going up and down, um, it just stays in place and it's not bouncing all around. Very cool. One interesting thing uh, I've seen with your algae scoring mechanism is that you don't score algae in the processor or you don't take time to throw it out on the field. You actually throw it behind the reef so it's stuck in the reef. Yeah. Uh, how did y'all come up with that strategy and, and why did y'all decide to go that route? So we are able to score in the processor and in the net, but we just decided that we're able to score high level corals, which for our game strategy, we feel is more efficient 
and we also just don't want the algae to be in our way because we've been we've seen uh, in previous matches and also in just our drive practice the algae can pretty easily get under the robot which just puts us in a bad position uh, so yeah well, thank you so much for going over your algae and coral mechanisms, but you can't drive the robot unless it's programmed. So let's move over to Gael, who's going to talk to us about the automations you have on this bot. So yeah, one of our unique features of this robot is the, uh, the automation or how automated this robot is. So if you can see right here, we have two cameras uh, right here, uh, which are then connected onto two orange pies right over here. I don't know if you can see right there. Um, and those, um, we can use photon vision, so then we can look at the April tags and detect it. And once we detect those April tags, we know where we are at the field. And that is very crucial um, for our scoring because um, if you guys wanna come by the computer, we have, uh, we have sort of this um, like, like website that uh, the operator uses on a tablet so that uh, for example, if he wants to score somewhere, he can click here, like I want to score this side, and I want to score at the highest score. And he, once the operator chooses the location, with the press of a button the drive, from the driver, this, um, the robot can automatically align itself, from navigate through the reef, and then go to its desired location, as well as the desired height that it wants to be. And that's amazing that y'all can control the robot like that. How long did this take to develop and, and what are some of the struggles you faced with that? Oh, uh, def so definitely one of the one of the struggles, um, it definitely took like around like two weeks. Uh, one of the struggles was that like the uh, like alignment itself, we had to find, so we had to find the specific set point so that we can automatically score. And sometimes we'd go too right or too left and we would like completely miss the coral. Um, but once we found our, our right height for like each core level, as well as the, the exact set point that we have to be in order to score, we've, uh, I, I would say we have efficiently done it. Uh, well, 5572 Rosbots, thank you for taking the time. You have an amazing bot and I wish you the best of luck here at San Antonio. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information.